So uh, either you could close your eyes or turn your gaze inward and uh, simply be this uh, fresh moment of being. Notice that uh, quality of your experience that has no borders. Notice the space around you. and invite yourself to be this space. So that the space within you and the space around you can merge Don't uh, think about it. You don't need to figure it out in your head. Rather at the feeling state, at the sensory realm. Allow your sensation to expand beyond the imaginary borders of your body. So that your sensation is taking place in the space. Floating in the space. And you are not located anywhere. It is as if the entire spaces inhaling and exhaling. And there is no center. Uh, 
or one could say the center is everywhere. The warmth of your body is everywhere in the space. And the thoughts that appear, appear in the space. Without any specific uh, limited location. <laughs> as if you are waiting without waiting. presence and absence as one. All directions are available without any specific direction. Everything appears in the space, in the space of awareness. But the label does not matter. It's a being which is not specific.
you forget who you are, what you are. And yet you are. This undefined presence. You are nowhere and everywhere. Nothing and everything. No need to hold on to anything. not uh, attempting to do anything. So the mind becomes more and more transparent. without objects.
Okay. <clears throat> So if there are any questions, uh, please make sure you unmute your mic. Any questions? Okay, well. Oh, I was gonna ask, I thought maybe you were reading a question okay. off the chat, I wasn't sure. Um, Hello. I was wondering, hi. Hey. Um, I was wondering if you can talk about determination. Yes. So there is a determin determination that arises out of love. There is, of course, quotes unquote, sp spiritual determination. And there is world worldly determination. So in terms of the de determination the spiritual determination, the determination to understand our true nature about consciousness, it requires an initial glimpse or an initial uh, understanding outside of our conditioned mind. So there is a, an apperception of about uh, 
an insight into love, into beauty, into freedom, into joy, into happiness. The causeless, only true happiness, only true freedom, which is causeless. And this glimpse into our true nature carries with it the charge. It's like you, you buy a, a new gadget. It comes with a battery. It has an initial charge in it. <laughs> So there is an initial interest to inquire, to investigate. But uh, like a newborn, it's a delicate. We have to cater to this um, new understanding. It's fra fragile in a way. It's easy to damage the precious insight. So you, you care for this initial understanding and you maintain the sense of value, the precious, the precious preciousness of the insight. Because if you simply formulate your understanding as a personal experience, a limited personal experience, you, you are overlooking its true meaning. But hopefully you have enough wit and enough good fortune to have an initial comprehension of the value of the gift that you have received. It is completely out of the box. It's the way beyond the impression of limitation and suffering. Along the path, there are many distractions. distractions in the world, the body, and also you may come upon
a guidance that is not uh, fully addressing the core of the matter, but it addresses So your determination is goes hand in hand with your understanding about the value of misunderstanding. Because you are habituated to relate in feelings and give importance to feelings and give power to feelings, we have to be very watchful. Not to give the power away, but to keep reminding ourselves about that which is of a true value. And that which is absolute. You have to also trust that the guidance towards the ocean, although you had a glimpse of the ocean, you still haven't fully uh, come upon it and bathed in it. You have to trust the guidance, the pointers that point you towards the ocean, and you have to be trusting until your own experience becomes uh, your guide, to be trusting that that which is being talked about is not just gibberish or some sort of conceptual academic um, material, you know. That freedom is absolute. There is an absolute freedom. Happiness and peace are absolute. And it's not just a concept, an idea, but the being that, being this causeless peace of, and happiness is our birthright and our destiny. There is no other destiny. The mind is just a series of images and sensations. That's not a destiny. This is just images on the screen. And what goes hand in hand with determination is sacrifice. Sacrifice that comes from your choice to 
live in a certain, in a certain uh, direction. Valuing, uh, valuing the, the right thing, valuing causeless peace and happiness and not just academically, but valuing your, your, your pursuit of it, your, your desire for it, your love for it. It comes at a cost. The, our body, mind are conditioned to live in a different direction. So you have to exert a certain discipline that comes from your love and your interest and your understanding. It's a grave mistake. To allow your mind and your feelings and your life circumstances to interfere with your path. It can take you on a swing. The mind can take you on a swing throughout the galaxies, which may take you many light years without uh, any benefit. When you are invited to God's castle, you have to accept the invitation. You've got to rearrange your schedule. You may have to save some money to buy a nice outfit, nice shoes and nice to attend the party that is not going to just come on, on its own. You have to commit yourself. And uh, Don't worry so much about the feelings that may arise. Recognize them to be just ripples on the surface of the ocean. You don't give much importance to the ripples on the surface of the ocean. It's, it's okay. They don't. affect your love for truth and your path, except if you become uh, enamored or fascinated by the ripples. There are, the, the reason your life is very, very important matter at, at hand, on hand. which overshadows the other trivial matters of food, shelter, and clothing. Because uh, there are certain limitations to the body-mind. At the body-mind level, there is a certain schedule. You cannot tend to everything and do everything. You have to have a order of priority.
So, you know, we, we do what it takes. We have an inner sense about truth because our true nature is that truth, is that reality. So there is within us, not within the conditioned mind, but within our being, a radar. Like the, like the uh, do, a dog has within within uh, her or him the scent of the master. Uh, uh, the scent it's within him. We have within us the scent of God. So until you find yourself at home, then of course you continue to explore. What is home? It's like a the prodigal, prodigal son who remember he is the queen and king's son. And he now is looking for where where they are, you see. But this is so much more than, than that. So much more. Our true nature is that, our true nature, our reality is that, that transparency, that reality. Our reality is available to us every moment. Who we are in this reality, we never are anything else but that reality in spite of the thoughts and the feelings and the beliefs which are uh, like the weather, the weather, what we are is this transparent, borderless, universal reality. It's mind boggling. Thank you. Um, <laughs> there's this thought game that happens where I think, oh, if I, if, if I had on the table, like never seeing my mom again or waking up, like, am I ready to make that choice? <laughs> And uh, I don't know, is this just a judgment game I'm playing with myself? <laughs> What's that? You don't have to make that choice. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, I guess I'm, mm. maybe I have this fear that I'm going to have to make the, the hardest choice at some point. <laughs> That which is real never can become unreal. That which is real can never die or everything else in our experience a flow. My mom, you know, moments of being together, conversations sharing some humor or the meal. It's very sweet, of course. It's an expression of the universe. It's an expression of love, of being. But the universe is constantly expressing itself, manifesting. It's not holding on. Even the most beautiful for, uh, forests, trees that are a thousand years old, beautiful, majestic, uh, she is much older than me, you, and your mom, and my mom. <laughs> In time, they, they also, it's very beautiful, their life, their growth. The, the, Classic Rewind. What they, what they provide you know, in nature. It's very beautiful. But it's in the realm of, of creation. It's in the realm of that which is created. So in creation, we experience creation. We experience this conversation, being with mom, being with friends. That's the creation aspect of life. That's reality in motion, motionless in motion, you see. But the motion of the motionless is not uh, the, the, that which appears, that which moves isn't, the motionless isn't holding on to it. It's not, you know, it's not making archives, you know, it's a yeah. flow. So the, the biggest choice we have is between the belief of being a daughter, a son, a mother, a father, somebody, and being presence. Because as presence, we are the love, the borderless love, the unconditional love, the universal love. As a person, we are the uh, limited love, the limited expression, you see until we come to the understanding of uh, our reality, we still, there is a limited aspect to our love and our expression and our perceptions, etc. So there is the, the mega aspect of reality where which contains your mom my mom your body my body my son my cousin my neighbor it contains all kingdoms animal kingdom is that realm within it there are So it's all contained, you see. That which is within that realm is a flow, is a flow. And so we, we experience the flow of thoughts, perceptions, sensations, but we overlook until we don't the, that which does not flow presence, beingness, our reality, the reality of, of our experience, the reality of our self, the reality of the world, the reality of the mind consciousness.
So in the dream world, in the world of appearance, it is chosen. It is chosen that this uh, orange tree is going to produce bountiful uh, oranges this season. It is chosen that four years from now, it, it will produce no oranges. There'll be a frost. <laughs> That's chosen in the realm of phenomena is chosen. But in the realm of consciousness, I choose. And there is one choice, which is the choice not to maintain a belief, a false belief, a belief that is not founded on truth. And so when you make that choice, then you find yourself choosing to explore the belief which many of us hold that I am this person. So as consciousness, you make that choice, the, cho the choice about consciousness. But in the world, it's chosen. The door bell rings, you open the door, there is the mail, mail delivery. Yeah. Just, they just not rang the bell. The bell just rang wrong, <laughs> right? You're driving and there's a flat tire. It's chosen. You don't make that choice. So don't worry about that which is chosen. <laughs> yeah. You know, okay. Just be watchful about your choice. Yeah. You are that which is looking. And that is not a phenomenon, it's not an, it's not an object, it's not something, it's the reality of being. You are that. Thank you. Okay, happy to see you. You too. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah, Maggie, I'm wondering about something that we'd like to ask you about that. Yes, Frank. Okay, so, um, yeah, in keeping with what you and Holly are talking about, mm -hmm. With a lot of that stuff that Holly was uh, talking about, and um, I guess sometimes feel like I really don't want to be here, and I, I feel like I uh, ask myself, I ask the universe, why did you put me here? Because all I've got to look for, like at my age, all I've got to look for is uh, you know funerals and uh, deaths and loss, 
Yeah, because they say like after after forty, you you know, you go to weddings. After that, you go to funerals. And luckily, I haven't had too many. But uh, looking at the possibility of losing my mom, but hopefully not too soon. But she is uh, she's eighty nine, and she's uh, got a little bit of a uh, memory loss. She's getting more and more, uh, you know, dependent. And I just see like a future of more dependency and loss. And uh, I I just say, you know, I, I ask the universe, why are you? Why did you even put me here? I don't want to be here. Uh, but letting that, putting that aside for now, I, I wonder why, um, if, why the unmanifest creates a world of duality, of, 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 of I know this isn't material. We're not, we're, I've already, I'm pretty clear about the fact that we, this is not a material world, although it seems to us to be very material, very, you know, this, you know if, you, if I went and, you know, fell off my balcony, I would kill my bed. There's, a, there's a, something called gravity and, and it's very real. Uh, you know, you can break an arm, you can, whatever, body can be broken in half. Why does it have to be that way? Why doesn't, ma why isn't manifestation like still in a sort of like a, almost like a virtual manifestation where nothing gets, nobody gets hurt and that kind of thing. Like, yes. Yes. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, no, I, I got it. I got it. When, First, just to, about the why question, you know, the, the cause and effect question. Is a, it's a question that sort of can spin around itself, you know. It's an unending question. Why? Because of this. Why this? Because of that. Why that? Because of this. Why then? It, it's, it's you can't, with the why question, come to an end. Yeah. Because yeah. why am I here? Well, because uh, uh, we decided to move from California, you know, to here. Well, why did we decide to move from California? Well, because. Uh, 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 I met Tara and we both were talking about being in Cal going to California. Why did you meet Tara? You know, I met Tara because uh, I, uh, I recognized her as, you know, my love. Well, how, why did you recognize her as your love? It, 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 that's so, it's just to sort of be clear about this sort of type of, this type of question. Um, Now, when you, when you are hungry, you, you're, you're not feeling so hot, you know, you, you're hungry, you want to eat, but then you enjoy, you enjoy eating. And there is a, a satisfaction in eating, as long as we don't overeat, which sometimes we do, but there's a satisfaction in eating uh, when we are tired, it's not so hot, you know, it's not being tired, but there's a satisfaction in resting. So at that, at the realm of experience, it, 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 it fits, you know, in that we live, you know, 40, 50, 60 years, whatever it is, and we've experience all sorts of things at, at one point. Okay, fine, end of show. Okay, good, that was, you know. So you, you shut off the computer, you know. <laughs> now, the fact that there is constant change in life, there's the day you're active during the day, you're really excited, you want to do this and that, and that comes three, four o'clock, you're starting to slow down, come six o'clock, you want to sit down, watch TV, and, you know, have a nice dinner, have a drink, it comes nine o'clock, you, you know, you're lying on the couch, boom. It's, it's in that, in, in, from that perspective, it all fits. Okay. But the question is, why do we perceive a problem? I mean, why the unhappiness? That's, that's the, the question. Because 
when I go to a movie and I'm watching whatever I'm watching, all sorts of things happening. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm enjoying the show. Well, if I, if I feel like going to the movies. But there is no unhappiness. So the question is not so much about like, why is there this dream? Why are there these events? That's not the question. Don't ask this question, why am I, why am I experienced day and night? Why am I experienced uh, old age? Why am I experiencing uh, dear ones love, uh, uh, dying? No, that's not the question. The question is, why am I unhappy? Why am I miserable? Imagine that all sorts of things happen. All your loved one passed. New ones are born, I guess, whatever. And you're happy. You won't be asking this question. The question is about unhappiness. Because, you know, you, you find people that are happy, very rare, but you do find people that are happy. And then you, you want to know from them, you don't want to know from them why are there earthquake and why are there tsunamis and why their mother died? You want to find out from them how come they're happy? How come, how do you <laughs> explain to me how you are happy? <laughs> so if I tell you, okay, you know, God loves to play, God is create, creative. We like to create, we like to experience things. It won't satisfy you. Okay, I mean, yeah, it may, you will put it in your catalog as one more uh, answer to your question. And you're gonna get different answers from, different uh, answers to that same question from different people. Big deal. It doesn't really mean anything that you got some sort of answer in your head. Because it's not about that. It's not like you really don't want to get some sort of answer, even if God appears and says, it is my will. <laughs> that's an answer. Heck, that's a mega answer. But it's, you still got to say, well, why, why are you willing this? You know, I got the answer, but, that's, but you're not accepting the answer. Because why? Because you're unhappy. You are unhappy. <laughs> that answer didn't take away your, unha your unhappiness. It, it actually was a screwed up answer. That is not what I wanted to hear. <laughs> it may be the truth, but who cares? It's not making me happy. <laughs> so the exploration is the exploration of unhappiness. Unhappiness is the sense of separation. When you contemplate unhappiness, you always find the belief that you, that I am a limited self. And it's a, it's a, it's a heavy duty download. It's quite a belief deeply rooted in our perception, in our so, so, societal uh, perceptions, perceptions, in our feeling states. That's what really boxes is this feeling of boredom of aloneness of isolation of uh, anger of envy now we hear the message well no you are not unhappy because of the feeling you're unhappy because you believe that this feeling matters, it matters to you. You being the false you, be, you being Magdi, being Frank, being that I shouldn't be feeling that. So there is a whole relationship of a you, a separate, a separate self with, you name it, with the world, with the neighbor, with the feeling, with the, the age of the body, with the, the state of health of your mom, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The core matter, the core, the virus is 
the belief that consciousness, like the reality of our experience, depends on the body mind, is limited, is mortal, is uh, affected by the world body mind. So the contemplation is contemplation of that belief. What is, what am I truly, and is it true that I am the body mind? That I refers to a storyline, whatever, whatever, whatever way each person conceptualizes I, is this I, the reality of I, which is inevitable, is undeniable. You cannot deny it, consciousness, I mean, awareness. But the question is, is this awareness some sort of story in time? Is this awareness a story of Magdi being born there and having brothers and this, and then at five years old and then 12 years old and at 16 this happened, like 18 that happened? Is, is that what I am? Is consciousness dependent on the body mind, limited, defined by thoughts, perceptions, sensations? Or is consciousness undefined? It's real. And in fact, it is the reality which perceives. It perceives without being affected by that which it perceives. It perceives the body being affected by hunger. It perceives the hunger, which belongs to the body, but it's not feeling hungry. It perceives the hunger of the body. It perceives the body getting really pissed because dinner isn't ready. <laughs> pissed meaning it's like, oh, well, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm hungry, I'm gonna eat now. It perceives, but it's not affected by that which it, which, which it perceives. It is affected by that which it perceives. When it believes itself, when consciousness believes itself that it is the body or it is the mind, then it's, then it's like it's experiencing that it is the body. And the body is always experiencing lots of bullshit. I mean, the body, I mean, yeah, some good stuff, but there's a lot of BS too the body is, is experiencing, you know, every day. Yeah. But this belief that I, consciousness, am the body is available for us to to look into it. And if we don't look into it, it, it operates. It operates because uh, there's fuel in the tank. You know, it, it's, it's, it's running, it's operating. It's been operating for a while. But as soon as we start inquiring, inquiring, what am I truly? Is the I, does it have a name? Is it called Frank? As I have often said, we're not denying the name of a body named Frank, not a problem. But is I, does I, the reality of I, right now, this moment, the reality that perceives, is it male? Is it female? Is it tall? Is it short? Is awareness yellow, blue? No. How do we know? How do you know that awareness is not male, female, or yellow or blue? We don't know it because we read it in a book. We know it because we, we are awareness. We have a direct, we, we experience, we have an experience of awareness, which is our own experience of ourselves. That is why we can say beyond any doubt, no, awareness is not blue. Right? There's no doubt, awareness is not blue. Ask yourself, how do I know that?
the wall is yellow. The floor is brown. But awareness is not blue. It doesn't have a color. How do I know that? It doesn't have an age. Awareness has no age. And there is no doubt about that. It's not like, well, well, I'm saying there's no doubt, but you gotta, you have to look into it for yourself. I mean, I'm speaking my understanding. There's no doubt that awareness has no, has no age. And there is no doubt that I experience awareness. I know awareness, otherwise I wouldn't be even, we wouldn't even be talking about, about awareness because we're not talking about some concept. Let's create a concept called awareness. No, by awareness, we're referring to the reality that perceives the reality that is. There is not something rather than nothing. There is something, this is a reality to this. Whatever this is, could be a dream, could be a hallucinogenic state, who cares? Because we're talking about the reality, which we all know as uh, I, whatever that I is, it's that reality. Which we can also refer to as I know I am. I know there is something rather than nothing. I know I'm aware. All of these, this, this specific type of knowingness is refers to awareness, refers to consciousness. Now the question about what's happening in the dream, why is, are there volcanic eruptions? Why are there crocodiles and deer and lions and rabbits? Because God willed it. <laughs> Who cares? That's not the question. And it's, It's the wrong direction to be pursuing this sort of question. It's not, that's not the question. You can spend, I would hate for you to spend too much time on this question, Frank, because it's not really the question. The question is about peace and happiness. And whenever you are feeling, oh God, I'm just tired of this world and blah, 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 blah. The I in, in, in your uh, feeling state is this, what you imagine yourself to be, what you, is this I is an a fictitious, oh, I'm so tired. That's this I is, arises because you're still in the inquiry, you're still into the investigation of the real I. So the, the, the fictitious I, which is a habit, arises here and there, but that's okay. You can see it arises, see it as an arising, see it as an arising of thoughts, images, sensations on the screen. When you succeed at seeing these thoughts and these feelings and without fighting them, without trying to correct them, without trying to do anything with them, just to see them, even if they stay for two hours, three hours, well, who's, who's sitting by the clock, you know? No, you know, it's not like, oh God, I've been feeling like shit for the past four minutes, you know? No. <laughs> we don't, you, you, you don't do that, right? We, nobody does that. Well, you, I, hopefully not. Just to see whatever is arising as movements, ripples on the surface of the ocean, appearances. Appearances and you 
early awareness. You are that which perceives. Okay, you gotta revisit that over and over because it's true. It's true that right now in this moment, you are the reality that's hearing these words. It's true. It's not like I'm saying, hey, let's do it. Let's create, let's create a, a thought experiment. You know, when I'm, let's imagine that I am hearing these words. It, it, it's, uh, no, it's a fact. I'm hearing these words. I hear it. I perceive. Not the body perceives. I perceive. The body is an instrument. Okay, Maggie, that was good. Yeah, I guess I was uh, looking at it from the, yeah, I get lost in the body-mind perspective, I guess, and I uh, forget that I'm consciousness. All right, friend. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any questions? Okay, well, very lovely to be with you all. Thank you, uh, Amna, hello Amna and Pauline. Hey Pauline, <laughs> Frank, Nina, Nina. Thank you. Yes, Nina, Hardy, Holger, Holger, Lauren, hello Lauren, Marga, hi Marga, Gloriana, como esta Gloriana? Shiva, Sadi Shiva, Grace, hi Grace, Kelly, hello Kelly, and Karen, hi Karen. Thank George. you. Yes, nice to see you, George and Zoe. Hello, Zoe and John. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Maddie. Okay, Zoe, lovely to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Thank you everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody.